And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Christina, who will teach you many things about Zoom. Thanks, Kristen. So that was Kristen Hoy. She's our conference manager, and I'm Christina Kostelecki. I'm the operations director here at PASA. And that means um, you may have seen my, my face before on many a Zoom meeting. We've done a lot since the start of COVID. And um, we'll keep doing Zoom meetings uh, through the conference and, and afterward until, um, until everyone is, is safe to, to meet in person. So given that, I have learned a few tips and tricks over the time. And my goal tonight is that you will leave here feeling really confident in terms of joining our conference. But also, even if you've used Zoom a lot, that you'll learn at least one new tip that you didn't know before. So that being said, um, I want to cover uh, quite a few things tonight, but I also really want this to be interactive and engaging because that's the goal of our conference too. And that's the whole point of using technology like Zoom is to help make this more interactive. So occasionally we'll be um, giving you all prompts to do some things tonight too. And you'll see that on kind of an oat colored uh, uh, background. And so that'll be your cue to jump in and do something tonight too. So hope you're ready. You didn't realize that you were going to be assigned stuff tonight, but you are. So <laughs> first up, I wanted to, um, one of the things that I always do when I start Zoom is I rearrange my windows. And the reason that I do that is because it can lead to a better experience for me. So the, the, when Zoom starts, if someone is sharing their screen, it defaults to full screen mode. But for me, that's a little bit distracting. So I exit out of full screen mode. And you can do this if you're on a Mac, it would be in the top left corner, those three dots, it's the, the uh, middle yellow dot. If you're on a PC, it's on the top right and it's also the middle uh, icon. It's like two little pages um, is the full screen icon. Um, if you're not in full screen mode, uh, to get to full screen mode, it's one little box. So top right if you're on a PC, top left if you're on a Mac. And part of the reason that I exit full screen is so that I can arrange my windows like this. Uh-oh, now you're seeing three Christinas. One, two, and then three, me. <laughs> this is a lot of Christina for one night. <laughs> so what I like to do, I, um, I exited full screen mode. And then I pulled up the chat window and the chat will be on that zoom bar and that could be on the bottom. It could be on the top of your screen. Zoom likes to move it around a lot, but you'll notice that that zoom toolbar and on there, it will either say chat or uh, it might have the three dots. It might make you do a little bit of searching to find that chat. But when you pull the chat up, now that you're out of full screen mode, you could put it on the side right next to your presenter window. So let me show a little bit cleaner view here. Um, so this is the same, same concept, right? So you'll exit full screen mode. You can put your chat on either side. And then you can also go up to the top right hand corner if you see where my mouse is and you can change the view. So if you try doing that now, you'll notice it kind of, it shows you more people that are in this meeting. It will show you uh, my slides, which are slides inside of slides. And if you've pulled your chat window up there, you can see the chat going through. Uh, so far, there's just one message in there, I think. <laughs> so um, the last thing on this slide that I wanted to point out is that this little uh, two, two bar window between the speaker view and the participants, you can pull that back and forth left and right. And I really like to do that when I'm looking at, for example, we talk about research a lot. And if we're looking at a particular slide that has a lot of minute details, I'll pull that bar over toward the right so that the screen share becomes the biggest portion. But if there are a lot of folks and it's just sort of general concepts being shown on the slide, then I'll pull that bar really far to the left, which makes the screen that they're sharing a lot smaller, but I can see more participants, more videos going on. So I really like being able to rearrange my windows as a way to get the most engagement out of this. And that way I don't feel like I'm choosing between looking at the chat and looking at what the speaker is saying. I wanna see both. <laughs> So on to that chat and Q and A. <laughs> uh, on the chat and Q and A, you'll notice some neat, some of our sessions that you'll join will have uh, just a chat window, 
and some of them will have both chat and Q&A. So try using the chat box to tell me which of them you see now, if you see both chat or both chat and Q&A. This is, this is my first interactive question for you all here. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, people are seeing chat only, and that is because um, PASA set up this particular session just to be really interactive and engaging. So if you think about if you were at the conference in person and we had a learning circle and we just had like 15 people sitting around in a circle, we would just all be freely chatting, right? So that's the equivalent of the chat box. But if we had a much larger session with 300 people attending, we couldn't have everyone chatting at the same time. You wouldn't ever understand or hear the speaker. So instead you would put a microphone at the front of the room and people would have to kind of queue up and ask questions specifically in the microphone. So in some of our larger meetings, we have this Q and A function that you don't see tonight, but that you will see on other nights. And when that Q and A comes up, it looks like this where you can add specific questions. You can see questions that other people have asked and you can even upvote those questions. So if you see a question that you were just about to ask and you really like that question, you can upvote that so that more and more people are asking that same question. You'll also see the responses if they're chatted in there or if it's answered live. So this Q&A function can be really helpful if we have a large meeting with a lot of people. But we also still want you to interact. You know, if you went into a, an auditorium with 300 folks at the conference, but you saw your friend Bob sitting in the second row, you could go sit next to Bob and kind of nudge him and, and quietly talk to him, right? Before the speaker started. So you could use the chat for the same thing in, in our virtual setting. So you'll notice here, it says to panelists or to everyone maybe, but you can change that little blue drop down menu and just chat specifically with one person. So you can see that it says Kristen Hoy is a host. So you could just chat the host if you're like, hey, this, this thing isn't working right. We'll even have a couple of other people that were, um, we'll have a tech support in there and you'll be able to tell who the tech support is and just chat them individually. But also if there were another attendee that you wanted to chat and say, oh, Joanne, that's a beautiful background picture, right? You could do that. So we really like having both the chat where you can chat to the whole group, chat individually, and the Q&A so that you can prompt and ask the speaker really specific questions. You don't need to worry about which one is it's going to have. We've already decided that here at PASO, so you can just show up and enjoy. Just know that there is both chat and Q&A. Next up is uh, renaming and changing your profile picture. So I really like this because sometimes uh, Zoom defaults to something silly like Galaxy 2S, and that's you know not gonna help anyone know who you are. So um, what you can do is if you move your mouse right now over the picture of your video, you'll notice this little pop-up in the top right corner, this blue choice where you can mute and unmute. But there's also the three dot menu. If you click on that three dot, you'll see where you can rename yourself and where you can change your profile picture. So if you would like to try to rename yourself right now, you could go ahead and do that. You can see um, I put my name and then PASA. So this is a good way for other attendees to be able to see who you are, your organization. And in this example, my profile picture, when I have my video turned off, I wanted to brag that I work with PASA. So I put the PASA logo on there. So if you work with a specific farm or organization, this is a good way, again, to indicate or tell other people about you. This is the closest equivalent that we have right now to our name badges that everyone loves at PASA. <laughs> so you get to choose whatever name badge you want. Uh, so if you spell your name wrong, this is totally on you. <laughs> I see a lot of people were able to rename themselves and that's fantastic. So this um, often will stick, but sometimes each time you come into a Zoom meeting, depending on how you join, you might have to rename yourself kind of regularly. And it's not that big of a deal. You'll always just do the same thing. You'll, you'll hover over your uh, video and then go up to that top right corner, click the three dots, and then you can rename. 
Next up, okay, we work with farmers in rural communities who don't have the best internet. And we work with people in cities who don't have the best internet. <laughs> so uh, especially with, uh, with COVID, everyone's working from home and it seems like no one has per perfect internet. So PASA has actually uh, found a way to kind of help alleviate this a little bit. If you call in, if you join the, the Zoom meeting and you just know that you don't have great internet, one of the best ways around that is actually, if you go down to uh, the, again, it depends on where your toolbar is, but where your Zoom window is and where it shows the, the mute or the stop video, and you click on that little carrot icon right next to that, you'll see several different options on that drop down menu. One of them is switch to phone audio. And if you click that, it will show you this little, this little window. It'll tell you what number to dial. And then it will tell you the, the meeting ID so it can connect you into the meeting. The last thing is this participant number. That's gonna of course be different every time you join a new meeting. But what that does is it means your audio is actually coming through your cell phone, which is, you know, doesn't have to be connected to the internet but the video is still on your computer. So the reason that this works is that you're hearing the speaker, even if your um, internet is lagging a little bit and it takes the video a few seconds to catch up, you're not gonna miss anything that the speaker says. And the same thing, if you are in, a, in one of those small learning circle discussion groups and you unmute to talk, even if your internet isn't perfect and your video freezes up a little bit, people will be able to hear your question really clearly. So uh, connecting your phone as the audio source and then keeping the video is a really good way to get around not so perfect internet. One more, um, uh, uh, just a sort of helpful troubleshooting tool that I wanna show you too, is that if you go back and you look at that, uh, um, the, the, the carrot icon next to that mute again, this is a good way to troubleshoot. If for some reason you're not hearing anything come out of your computer, what sometimes happens if maybe you had another um, stereo system hooked up to your computer or another monitor or something like that, the Zoom will try to guess which audio to use, output and input, and sometimes it guesses wrong. So for example, I have an extra monitor here to the side, which is why I keep looking this way occasionally, but that monitor doesn't have uh, any speakers attached to it. And so sometimes if Zoom tries to say, oh, this is what you're using as your, as your, your screen, it will also try and get audio out of there, but that's not correct. So I have to go down to that little carrot and change the output and that will help fix it. Or again, if I have my, um, my headphones connected, but it doesn't recognize it, it tries to get the microphone from my uh, external monitor, but there is no microphone on there. So I have to go to the mic uh, choice on there and change that. So just a good troubleshooting tip, if you're in the meeting, you can't hear or someone can't hear you, try going to that carrot and changing the options on there. Next up, adding reactions. So we all know that um, speakers play off of the audience, right? When people are, are really engaged and nodding their heads and, and following along, it makes for a more interactive experience for everyone. And the, the speaker just, you know, gets more excited about what they're talking about. So that's a little, you know, of course you can nod along and, and give a, a physical thumbs up to things, but in Zoom, they offer another function as well. So if you go back to that, uh, that Zoom bar, that menu that I keep talking about, somewhere next to the chat, there's also a reactions. And if you click on that, you can give a heart, a thumbs up, lots of different things. So, oh, look, I got some clappy hands. So see, there we go. <laughs> we've already got, we've got someone who's, and some thumbs up. So we see some folks who are, are seeing it and they automatically will go away. So if you hit one of those, it stays up for a few seconds and then it'll disappear. So uh, you can really react specifically to what the speaker is talking about. And the speaker sees kind of a rolling list of what people are saying. So if you, you know, your speaker says that soil health is the most important thing on their farm and yes, you just want to cheer for that. You can go ahead and use those reactions. 
Uh, next up, and I love all of the, the questions that are coming through. So I'm actually gonna pause for one second here. Uh, a question asked about how to change my photo. So I'm gonna go back to that one briefly. Just gonna move backwards here through this since we were on this. So this, um, this P icon represents my video. So go over to where you see your video and move your mouse around until you see that uh, the blue mute and then the three dots, or it will say unmute. So click on the three dots and that's where you get the, the choice to rename yourself, but also to edit your profile picture. Your profile picture is only going to show up if you stop video. I'm not gonna stop my video right now, but so when I stopped my video here, Kristen just did. So you can see now Kristen's profile picture has just a static picture of her. And then if you turn your video back on, then you would see the live video. So that profile picture, even if you change it, it's only going to show up after you've turned off your video. So back to, uh, we went through some reactions and now talking about joining a breakout. So we talked about, um, if you've been to the PASA conference before, you might remember we have regional breakout meetings where we uh, wanna have specific discussions on specific topics or for a specific region. And so we take this whole big group and we say, okay, the Northeast region, you, you go over that way. The South Central, you head this direction, right? Well, how do you do that in a Zoom space? <laughs> there actually is a way and it's really easy for participants um, what will what you'll see if if we have a breakout meeting, you'll see either this option, this pop up that says join a breakout, or we might even be able to move you just directly in there. And so you'll see a little screen that says joining the breakout room. So you don't have to do anything different when you join. Uh, you start out in the whole big group and then we send you over into your small breakouts. And the reason we do that is because if we only have four or five people in a breakout room, then everyone can unmute and talk really freely, right? You've been in Zoom calls where there's 30 people and they all try and talk and it just doesn't work. But you've been in Zoom meetings where there's like four or five people and it's really nice, right? You can all unmute and just sort of talk. You don't have to worry about muting and unmuting. So, uh, once you're in the breakout, let's say someone is having an issue, maybe a technical issue, or maybe, gosh, you just, you know, it, it's not there, you just have a question. So, right, you won't see this right now because we don't have, we're not in a breakout, we're in the, the big group. But once you were put into a breakout room, you would see this ask for help icon down at the bottom. And when you click on that, you can say, I have a question and I need the host to come in here so I can ask them the question. The host can kind of jump around and move from, from breakout room to breakout room. So uh, you'll be able to still ask for help and ask for support. Also, the host can send messages to everyone in the rooms. So if that happens, you would see a green bar across the top with the message from the, the host. And those kind of like reactions come up for a little bit and then disappear again. So if you're in a breakout, just keep an eye on, on the top bar there to see if any messages come through. And then the, the host can also, the, the person in charge of the meeting can also close those breakout rooms and say, okay, everyone come back into the main room. But if you needed to leave a little bit early or um, you, were, you were done in that particular breakout room, whatever it was, you could also leave on your own. There would be an option down in the bottom right corner that says leave breakout or just leave the whole meeting if you needed to you know, step away from your computer, go milk the cows or whatever which is a serious scenario at the PASA conference when it will go virtual. <laughs> so um, again, breakout rooms, you don't have to do anything special. You won't even necessarily know if we're going to have breakout rooms until you get there. But a couple of tips, um, we know we have um, evening fun nights during the main conference, Monday through Thursday. So if you're registered for the main conference, we'll have some family friendly games. And in those, we're gonna put people into the small breakout so that they can do some networking and some, some fun chats. So next up, um, updating Zoom. This, um, you know, is, is 
not a fun thing to do, but Zoom is constantly updating. And some of the things we talked about tonight, some of the things that you were practicing, you may not have even seen necessarily if you weren't on the latest iteration of Zoom. So I recommend tonight, maybe after this meeting, um, checking to see if there's an update needed. And if there is, go ahead and update your computer so that you're ready for the conference. So to find out if you need to update your computer, of course, there's a lot of different computers out there. So I won't know your specific needs, but I can kind of tell you in general. If you are on a Mac, once you're in a Zoom window, if you're on a Mac, oops, you can go up to the, the top bar there, click on zoom.us, and then go down and say, uh, check for updates. If you're on a PC, a Windows machine, you should be able to go to this carrot icon on your bottom computer toolbar and look for the Zoom icon and right click and say check for updates. And if you happen to have the Zoom app itself, when you're not in a meeting but in just the Zoom app, you could go to your um, either your picture or your initials in the top right corner of that app and click on it. And in that drop down menu, there's a check for updates there. So again, I know that um, this is a little bit harder because everyone's computer is different. But uh, once you have Zoom pulled up, you should find a menu that says check for updates somewhere. So once you've um, clicked that check for updates, you'll either see this that says update or what we hope we see is a, a message that says you're up to date, <laughs> done. That's, that's the end goal, right? All right, so the next thing, um, and actually the last thing that I wanted to cover before we get to more of your questions is getting support. So the conference has started um, today. You've gotten in great. You've had no problems, amazing. The day of the, the big event, the, the meeting that you were really excited about and really wanted to go to, for whatever reason, your computer just isn't cooperating. Because of course, that's the day it's going to happen, right? We want to make it as easy as possible for you. So if we go back to that idea of the, the chat versus chat and Q&A, the Q&A is really intended for questions to the speakers about the topic, right? And the Q and the chat is intended for both uh, questions to the, uh, the host, other attendees, the tech support, things like that. So again, you can change on that blue menu. You can send a message just to the host. You could send it to everyone. But we're also going to try in some of the larger meetings where we anticipate folks may need a little extra support. We're going to have someone who will rename themselves tech support so that you know who to ask for. So you could just go to this green, the blue menu and choose tech support from the list. And then you're just privately chatting with the tech support. And that's a really good way to ask some questions that seem to be confusing or that are, are causing you some trouble or that you're just not sure whether it's a question for the whole audience or not. And if you, um, you know, accidentally put a question that's meant for the speaker, not in the Q&A, you put it in the chat, someone will just respond back to you and say, great question, throw that over in the Q&A so everyone can see it there. But let's say you, you were having like such a hard day, your computer absolutely didn't want to cooperate, you can't even get into Zoom, right? <laughs> Well, if you can't get into Zoom, we have uh, our friendly, amazing staff and volunteers who are at the ready for the whole of the conference, both the pre-conference and the main conference. Uh, so you can call our number. This office number is listed uh, in, the, in the brochure, on our website, in the emails. You can find this number anywhere. Uh, you can jot it down now if you want to, right? So uh, we'll have chats going on if you're in the main conference in that um, platform that we're using. We want people to be able to chat even if they're not inside of a specific workshop or session. So we'll have in the platform tech support there as well. We'll have folks that you can call. We're, we're trying to make it as easy and accessible as possible because the goal is that the technology should support and enhance the conference, not get in the way of us connecting with each other. 
All right. So I, um, I talked about all of the little tech things that I wanted to talk about tonight, but I also wanted to leave time for all of you to ask questions. So you can feel free to uh, practice muting and unmuting yourself. And let me go back really quickly because I have um, just a couple more bonus tips, if you will, for um, uh, muting and unmuting that I kind of like to, to share with folks. So there are actually three different ways to mute and unmute yourself in, um, sorry, let me get to the right screen here, in Zoom. Just gonna keep clicking through. All right, so if you, um, again, go over to your video and move your mouse around a little bit, in the top corner, you'll see unmute. You can click that. Or on that toolbar that I talked about, in the bottom corner, you can mute and unmute there. But if you have clicked, if your mouse is on the Zoom window, if you actually hold down the space bar, as long as you're holding the space bar, you'll be unmuted. So if you wanna practice that, you can just hold down the mute and say, yep, got it. You'll get a little message that says temporarily unmuted. So your, your mouse, you have to have clicked somewhere in the Zoom window, like on your face or on someone else's video or on my slide, something like that. And once you click with your mouse and then hold the, hold the space bar down, as long as you're holding the space bar, you'll be unmuted. I, I really like being able to use that space temporarily mute and unmute. If I just need to pop in and say, yep, I agree. And then I wanna go back on mute. That's a really easy way to do that. But if I wanna ask a full question, right? I might hover over my video and click the unmute button so that I can actually ask a full question without holding my finger down on that space bar the whole time. So. Um, there's a question in here about why do I have to keep changing my microphone every time I use Zoom? Um, there, there are some ways if you go to um, support.zoom.us, I think is the address. I should have grabbed that, but I didn't. Um, if you go to that website, maybe Kristen can drop that in the chat for us. There are actually some ways where you can change the default microphone that is used in Zoom. That's a little bit more advanced, um, but I'm happy to, to um, you know, work with you via email or if you give me a call, I can, I can walk you through that. Um, but there are some ways where you, you should be able to change with the default to help Zoom remember which one you wanna use. But I agree, um, it took Zoom a, a really long time to remember which microphone to use for me. So it can be, it can be pretty frustrating. So Kristen drop, dropped the link in there to Zoom support for us. Um, and I didn't see any other specific questions come through, but feel free to use chat or um, you can, um, you're welcome to unmute yourself as well since we don't have too many people in here and ask a question. I'll just add that um, I'm going to drop a third link in here. Uh, Zoom has a really simple way for you to test meetings without all of us watching you. Um, they have a just a default test meeting. You go to the website, you log in, and then that can give you a chance to just really test out your settings, look at your video, and, and really see what's working or not without um, doing that with the pressure. If there aren't any other questions, I think we'll go ahead and sign off for the evening. Um, as always, feel free to email me, chat, uh, give us a call. We'll be happy to answer any questions we can.